well so um Gideon thanks for joining and I'm just waiting for well it's time there is no need to wait again and so um welcome everyone and I'm grateful for those who have made their time to be here today um I think that since our previous session there were several questions that came up and a lot of people tries to get understanding to several other things and as usual i try to put the questions together so that um once i have the opportunity to explain um we make it in a video form so that everyone can have an understanding of the challenges and the solutions that comes with it so i mean this session is just going to be one of those um going to throw more lights and provide some answers to some of the questions that have been asked um in the previous weeks okay so but then before um we proceed with the questions for the day i just want to make it known that um it is possible to make it on this journey everyone almost everyone i always keep saying that everyone can embark on this journey and then actually sail through but sometimes um it is difficult when you start a journey in the name of do it yourself and then you try to create some form of mistakes or some of form of challenges before you seek help i received several complaints of people who have started doing something on their own and then some have submitted the applications and at the end of the day some got refused some got rejected some got banned i mean you don't want to create a scar before you seek for help so um, it is always good that before you submit your application you want to you know be sure that at least someone goes through even if it will cost you some few amount of money for somebody to review your application before submission i always advise that um in as much as you are doing it yourself or you are trying to do everything yourself don't don't try to be smart there are some people who say okay i'm applying to this school can you confirm if this school is good or if this school is okay for me to apply i'm like no you can't be acting smart but rather go in a professional way so that the person can advise you tell the person whoever is ready to help you that look i don't have money but i want to do this whole thing all by myself but i will need your support and your guidance so what will be your charges if you have to guide me or what will be your charges if i have to do it at uh, to, uh, to this point and then you have to come in and support or help me you understand it's better that way than you start halfway and then you'll be picking information from places half by half at the end of the day people will not be willing to give you full information when they realize that you want to be smart you understand so i always advise that in as much as you are trying to do everything all by yourself seek counsel if it will to require you to pay some amount of money to get it done submitting an application or going for an interview once and for all it's better than you know submitting half application or doing it halfway through and then at the end of the day you get rejected do you understand or you get banned i have few people who have got banned from uk and then they've got their visa for canada refused and some also go to u.s embassy f1 visa interview unprepared i mean these are things that you could have avoided so i always say that those factors or those things that are within your your remits that you can control you can call on someone to you know help you solve them try and do it before you go ahead with your application because once you get banned once you get refused or once you get rejected you create a scar and the next time you are going you want to be sure of what or you want to provide solutions to some of those problems so it's better you do it once and for all so don't try to be smart on this journey and say let me pick information here small let me pick information there small and then submit my application i'll be successful i can tell you that out of 100 percent of those who try that maybe five percent will be those that will be through it do you understand so sometimes it works for some people but other times too, these days things are changing so based on previous incidents things that happened in the past we use it to advise others you understand so seek counsel on this journey i mean no one is an evil 
for you to say if i share it with this person the person will be thinking that oh i'm also preparing to travel so i'm not going to share with you i'm going to do everything all by myself now when you do it all by yourself and then at the end of the day you get rejected before you get to get in touch with people that look i've started this journey and then this is the challenge i have i will need your support and all that it doesn't really help so before you submit your application if it will cost you something little consult someone to review it not just anyone not everyone who who speaks on this platform knows almost everything so use your intuition to judge can this person really review my application before submission and how much will it cost me you understand okay once you do that you are good to go and then you can submit an application that will work for your good okay so now that's just for some of the concerns that i've come to realize some of the challenges that people are facing now let's go quickly to some of the questions that people kept asking for the previous days so there are people who want to uh, find out that can they book visa appointments without securing admission i'm like no the first thing before you even go for your uh, to go and pay for mrv mrv is basically for your visa fee which if you are in ghana you pay it at gt bank okay any branch in gt bank before you go and pay this fee you want to do what you want to secure admission first now when you go and do that before you come back and come and fill the form online at the cgi portal okay now i don't know how you are going to navigate through because on the course of filling the form you'll be required to provide your i20 um, number or you know you'll be asked to name your school and then some few other things okay so if you don't secure admission i'm wondering how you'll be able to fill that form so practically i don't think it is impossible uh, i don't think it is possible rather it is impossible okay i don't think it is possible so please before you go and pay i think 2200 for your f1 visa fee i'm talking about us please make sure that you secure admission you can even secure admission to a school that you may want to change later but once you secure some form of i20 you can use that to first of all secure a visa appointment slot okay so it is impossible to apply for i mean book a slot for visa before you secure admission there are several dangers involved what if you don't secure admission on the time or before your visa appointment comes what are you going to use to do the interview you know so you have ended up wasting that money okay so i would advise that i would advise that in as much as um, time is against us and we also want to secure visa slots ahead of time apply to the schools early secure your f1 visa slot early an appointment uh, early and go for your interview early do you understand don't try to be smart to say okay since there are dates in january let me go and pay for f1 visa fee and then secure that date before i'll be looking for school it doesn't work that way when you do it that way and then the time comes and then you don't secure admission you can also force the schools to you know give you admission on time because you have booked a visa slot okay so it is always important that you do what you apply to the school first secure your i20 go to any branch where the visa fee is paid pay it take the ticket or the the paying receipt home and then fill the form once you fill the form book appointment and then wait for your interview date okay so please don't try to be smart don't try to um buy or pay for visa fee and then before you secure admission to a school it's it, it's just not nice i see that's a waste of money so please don't do it okay secure admission first that is the first step in every journey in this school in this school journey secure admission first once you secure admission you can go ahead once your i20 is in you can go ahead pay your visa fee and then proceed to book an appointment sometimes you release dates. even today they were dating or oh, ghana embassy okay they were dating december and all that okay so if you are smart if you don't sleep much if you keep monitoring the portal you are likely going to secure a date ahead of your what uh, resuming date so there's no rush that um dates are finishing so let me just 
pay. You may end up wasting money. Okay. So I think that is clear now. Don't, I'm saying that, don't go and pay for visa fee before you secure admission or before you secure an I-20. It is not practicable. It is not done. Okay. So please don't do it. That is the first question. I've settled that. Good. The next question. So somebody say like they have already booked an appointment but have secured admission to another school. Now, this school they have secured admission to, they've, they've secured funding as well, which is better than the previous school. So, the concern is, how do I change my status? Because I've filled my CGI portal, which is my F1 visa portal already, and I've booked appointment already. So, how do I change my status to reflect the new school that I've secured admission with good funding? This is easy. Okay, when you log on to your F1 visa portal, those who are familiar with the US F1 visa portal knows that we have a series of what, um, pages there. Okay, there is a place where you can click on it to request for feedback or to send a feedback to the embassy. Yes, that is a column that you will use to send your details to the embassy by mentioning your current school, the details of the school, the program, your name, you know, when your course is starting and all that. Okay. Then the embassy will receive your feedback and then they will use it to update your school for you. So your new school would have reflected, okay? And then you could have, you, you would have secured date already. So you just have to print your appointment slot, okay? Or your appointment um, confirmation page and send it and that reflects your new school. So it's not really a difficult thing. Once you secure admission to another school and you felt this school is better, and than the previous one that you have used, just change it, okay? So sometimes people secure admission to school A, they know that that school A is not what they want to use for visa interview, okay? And then they are wondering, should they go ahead to pay visa fee for this? I'm like, yes. Once you secure some form of I-20, you are eligible to pay for visa fee and book appointment once the date is favorable. But if you know that you are going to secure another you know, I-20, which is going to come before the, the visa appointment date that you've gotten, cool. You can book that appointment. Once the new I-20 arrives, write to the embassy using the feedback session, write to the embassy, provide details of your current school, and then they are going to effect that change on your portal, okay? So you don't have anything to lose. You can have current school, and then you wish to change it. You are allowed to do so, but be mindful that rescheduling, which I'll talk about anyway, is currently limited to like twice. So whilst you try to do some of these things, you are mindful of also the portal you are using and how sensitive they are and the restrictions that have been introduced, okay? So that, that is also that, okay? So the question as to whether I've already booked this appointment, my date is where this, I've secured admission to different school, can I go ahead and change so that this school has low funding, this school has a scholarship, it will boost my chances for visa interview. I want to change it. I don't know how to change it. I'm like, yes, it is possible. Use the feedback section on your portal, on your F1 visa student portal to uh, change it, okay? You can use that section to change it. So that means it is uh, possible, okay? That is also uh, possible, you can change it. Then the other way too is that maybe you you are having difficulty or you are not getting response from the school and then at the end of the day your i20 delays and then your interview dates has arrived just go with whatever you have in the system and once you are done with that you can well your visa is granted you can change the school you want to go okay maybe the first will give you a scholarship of ten thousand the second school give you a scholarship of maybe twenty thousand or fifteen thousand okay then you want to switch from the first school to the second school it is also possible but you were unable to do that before the interview nonetheless you secured your visa but you still want to go to work the second school all you need to do is to work, change the school so you write to the second school and say hey look i have secured my f1 visa i would like to transfer to your school so you need to do like form of service transfer and all those things to reflect the school okay so that when you get to the, the port of entry they will scan your I-20, which means that you'll be going to the school with your current I-20, not the previous I-20, because you have switched the school, you have transferred your service fee and all that, uh, your service payment and all that. So it is now reflecting what school B instead of school A. Do you understand? 
So you do that at the point of entering, they check everything, and then it will reflect your new school. So you don't really have anything to uh, to be worried of, right? You don't really have anything to be worried of, okay? So I'm saying that it is possible that you can secure admission to one school, book visa appointment, and then you can change to another school afterwards, either before the interview or after the interview, okay? So there is nothing to be worried about in this regard as well, right? So that is also well, um, an answer to uh, that particular question. The question was, I've already booked an appointment, but I've secured admission to another school, which gives me more funding that's likely to book my visa chances. How do I go about it? You know, you can change it, and I'm like, use the feedback session on your CGI portal, write to the embassy, indicate that you have secured admission to a different school, and you like to change your current school on file, so they will change your current school on file for you, okay? So that sorts out that question as well, right? Okay. So the next question is, um, um, my CGI portal actually allows for one rescheduling. Yes. I mean, um, recently, if you monitor, they've updated the, the, the system. Okay. They've updated the portal. So what's happened is that once you have your... Hold on. Once you have your your payments done for your visa fee, what it means is that you book once and you reschedule once. That's all. So there are those in the past you can reschedule like four times or so, but now the portal does not allow you to reschedule your F1 visa appointment like four times. Once you book it first. And then you have to reschedule second. That ends it. What it means is that if you continue to reschedule after the second attempt, you have to end up buying or paying for a different MRV. So please take note of this, that today you are no longer allowed to reschedule on your F1 visa portal more than twice. Okay. The first one is when you select a date. Maybe you select a date in 2024, but your course starts in spring 2023. So the first date you got when you were applying first is like maybe June 3rd, 2024. So you book that first, okay? And be hoping that there will be a date that opens in what? December. All right. So that is the first one. The June one is the first one. The second one will be a date that will open in December, okay? That is the second attempt. Once you book in December, that ends it. You cannot go ahead and reschedule again because once you do, you have exhausted your work, your slot for rebooking. You have to work, go and pay another money at the bank before you do what? You select or you book new appointment again. So please, it is now limited to like two. So you, you don't want to risk your money Pay for the first one, reschedule, reschedule, and then you have exhausted it. I mean, the system will work, give you a warning that you have, if you continue to reschedule for this one, that means that you 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 would have exhausted your your slot, and then you may end up to pay for another MRV. Okay, so MRV. So so please, the portal does not allow currently does not allow for several rebooking and several rescheduling. So kindly take notice of this and then don't be a victim. I've had complaints of people who say, oh, the portal this, this, I can't reschedule. The system automatically reschedule my date for me and what have you and a whole lot. I mean, sometimes if it happens that way, it's either you cancel the appointment and go and pay for another one. If you really want an immediate date and the current date you have does not favor you, okay? So maybe to avoid some of these things, you want to be cautious of what you do on your CGI portal. The CGI portal is the same as your F1 visa portal when it comes to the US embassy, you know, visa application or US school visa application, okay? So I'm saying that it is currently allowing for two slots for booking. The first one is when you book a date, maybe that is favorable or that is not favorable for you. The second one is when you do what? You have to reset and that is it you cannot reset it again okay that is currently what is happening uh, in the system okay so please take a note of 
some of these things and be what um be mindful of it before you go ahead to 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 pay your visa fee and then to try to book an appointment and what have you if the date that is on the portal is not favorable you can book one date and still be waiting for the favorable date okay or if you book that date and then your course starts in january but then the date you've selected so far is june you see that you write to your school and tell them that <laughs> you are not getting a date for your spring start program so your program should be postponed to or, or deferred to or for okay in that case you can use your june date that is if you don't have money to go and buy another mrv but if you have money to buy another mrv and you are still determined to go for spring then you can you can reschedule again and then that means that you have exhausted that um, mrv and then you have to go back buy another one before you can come and book again do you understand so please um i would advise that we take you from some of um, these things and then shouldn't be a victim okay so um someone is also asking to know whether can you still you know buy mrv fee and look for dates without service fee yes i mean one thing i've always advised students is that mrv is the first thing after you secure an i20 as for service fee it is paid at least um 48 hours i guess to your interview okay and it is somewhere around 350 360 based on charges it is 350 but then anyone who is paying for you they take transactional charges of i think ten dollars and then if there is an exchange rate involved they will take like you know extra okay but a system it is what um 350 okay so once you secure your i20 don't worry much about your um service fee instantly worry about your visa fee go and pay for your visa fee which is the same as your mrv okay go and pay for that and then secure a visa slot before you go and pay for your service fee now the reason why you can delay in paying service fee is that remember service fee lasts for a year okay so if you even go ahead and pay service fee before even paying for your mrv fee that means that your service fee is ahead right so in case you did not secure admission or you did not go to school that same year and then you have to go to school in the subsequent year if you don't take time your service fee is going to expire because it lasts for only a year right so it's going to expire and then you have to what uh, pay for another service fee right so our advice that once you secure your admission focus on paying for your visa fee okay pay for your visa fee secure visa appointments slot before you go ahead and then what uh, do any other um payment which is your your service fee okay so practically last time i was telling someone that um as i was telling someone that there are only two things you pay for when it comes to us visa application practically there are only two things okay what do you pay for you pay for your service fee which is like 350 dollars and then you pay for your visa fee which is like i mean i think around one 85 or 175 dollars but which is around 2200 ghana cities right so these are practically two things anyone who wants to embark on this journey you should have a money on standby to take care of this maybe approximately 600 dollars you can do that too right but the last one which is the service fee is what you need to focus on at the latter end but you need to pay before you go to the interview 48 hours before the interview i'm sure okay and once you do that don't don't wait till let's say you are going to have the interview the next day before you are struggling to pay whilst you are looking for dates you're also looking for money for your service fee okay so that once you get a date you also get money on standby to pay for your service fee okay service fee is not paid in ghana but then i'm told there are some or it's not paid locally sometimes it's paid at the international level using western union or paper but then I'm told you can use some applications now. I haven't used some before, but I've had people who have used it, except that the charges are high. So if you don't have money to, you know, 
do or pay for some of those charges you would want to leverage on somebody who live in the state okay to pay for you right sure so that is what you need to know you cannot you cannot you cannot pay service fee before visa fee visa fee first before service fee. visa fee first because you want to secure visa slot or appointments visa interview slot okay once you secure that then you prepare towards paying your service fee nonetheless you need to have the tool done before you appear on the interview date so once you have money focus on what doing the visa fee first securing visa appointment slot then proceeding to pay your service fee okay so that is that one right so the next person also wants to find out can one wait and apply for the mrv after gaining admission or it is always necessary to book an appointment ahead um ahead of the admission no so i've addressed this question now i'm like no secure admission first before you go ahead and pay for the mrv okay you don't apply for the mrv you pay for it so you if you are in ghana you go to any gt bank across the country with your passport and then say you are paying for what f1 visa interview fee you know they will work give you a transactional receipt which has transaction id and then you return home and then come and fill it but i'm saying that secure admission first okay because when you are filling the form you'll be asked some series of questions okay you have to provide those questions regarding your school start date and then all those so if you don't have a school if you don't have i20 how do you know that the study you want to assume i mean it's not advisable right and then there are some numbers on your i-22 you are likely to require to put in your form when you are filling the form so um quickly i will not advise you for you to pay for visa fee ahead of your admission secure admission first secure an i-20 once you secure an i-20 you are sure to go ahead to go and work pay okay sometimes it's not everyone that will go to the bank for f1 some people can go for m1 what people don't know is that people who are coming to school with vocational skills background sometimes come with what m1 visa m1 visa also have some form of restrictions okay sometimes it does not allow individuals who are on m1 to work some people who come from their vocational background they don't work on campus right so please um don't pay for that before you 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 secure admission it is not advisable right so kindly take note secure admission first secure your i20 even sometimes when you secure your admission it does not come with i20 so even securing admission alone is not a guarantee that you should go ahead and pay for visa fee no secure admission secure an i20 before you go ahead to pay for your what visa what fee okay so that is settled again then you say can you book for dates without service fee yes i mean once you are able to secure an i20 and then pay for your mrv fee yes you can go ahead and then book a date okay service fee must be paid 48 hours your interview that's like maybe three days so you can you can book your interview relax and be preparing and be looking for money for your service fee because it's 350 dollars <laughs> okay so it's it's high right so you can you can book visa appointments you can book and then be with gathering money for your for your service fee right so once you secure your i20 booking a date is next thing okay before service fee so the service fee you give yourself that within one week to your interview pay it i always advise people that once we have one week, let's pay it before the interview date. Because sometimes we pay and then it doesn't reflect in the system. Sometimes you go and pay and a whole lot happens. So if you wait for the 48 hours, let's say three days to the interview before you are paying, you may go and then your service fee will not re reflect and then the service fee payment will not reflect. Then they will ask you to go and work rescheduling come another time but knowing that getting dates in recent times is very difficult i would advise that you don't you don't shoot yourself in the shoe what you want to do is that pay your service fee at least one week to your visa interview that helps okay 
even if you don't know anyone in the US, once you are looking for the money, keep chatting people and then keep asking, um, I want to pay service fee, can you help me? But then if you have money and then you want to avoid anyone, you know, interaction where some people have doubt as to whether people will really pay the money they are going to pay and somebody will run away with your money and what have you, you can use the app that I'm saying that some people use, okay? I'll look up the name and maybe probably add it into the, the comment section, okay? But basically, that is that you don't really have to pay for, um, you don't really have to pay for visa fee before admission. You don't have to, but then once you secure an I-20, you can book your visa appointment, okay? You can book your visa appointment before you pay your service fee, right? So I think that also has been settled, right? That also has been set up. So I think that that will be the answers to some of these questions. So we can do a recap of some of the questions we've covered so far. So the first thing I mentioned was that please don't try to be smart. Don't create a gap or don't create a scar before you, you, you look for help. Before you submit your application, in the name of do it yourself, try to figure out who can help you review your application and if the person will charge you, how much the person will charge, and if you can afford it, at least the person should be able to say that these documents you are submitting are going to give you an admission or are going to help you secure admission, uh, that's admission visa or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or somebody should be able to review your document and say, look, the bank statement you are adding, these documents you are adding would, would lead to a ban. So please avoid it. Do you understand? So, in the name of doing it yourself, in the name of doing it yourself, make sure somebody reviews for you. Don't get banned before you come and look for help. Because once you get banned, once you get refused, once you get rejected, it becomes very tedious. We have to write a long thesis, or you have to prepare tough next time. Because when you appear before the visa officer, the first question they will ask is, what has changed? I mean, if you hadn't created that gap or that scar, no one will ask you what has changed. You would have appeared as a new applicant. Okay, so even sometimes answering what has changed is, is not easy. Okay, imagine going with the same school, the same funding, and then you are going to answer what has changed. What exactly are you going to say in what has changed in your application? So it will be tough. So I'm saying that before you submit your application for visa or anything, in the name of doing it yourself, seek help and then depend on how much the person is going to charge you, be ready to pay and then, or negotiate, okay? You know there is no money, so negotiate, right? Negotiate and then that works well for your good, right? So that's it. And then the other question we also talked about was um, that people say, can I book visa appointment before I seek your admission, which I said, no, you need your I-20 before you move to any bank to go and pay for your F-1 visa fee. So don't apply or don't pay for F1 visa fee before you are even applying to a school or before you are trying to secure an admission. It is not possible. It is not right. You may end up losing your money. So please don't do that. Okay? Please don't do that. Don't pay for visa fee before you think of securing admission. Secure admission first. Secure your I-20 first before you move ahead to do what? To pay. Do you understand? For your visa fee. Okay, then uh, someone also wants to find out um, they've secured admission to a different school which gives them good funding, but then they've already booked visa interview with a previous school. How can they change it? I'm like, cool. That is a good news because the, good, the new school probably give you new funding and the, the funding is also low, right? Which have the chances to boost your visa acceptance rate. Do you understand? So what you want to do is that use the feedback section on the CGI portal okay all those who are applying to a uh, u.s visa um student visa application once you are doing it yourself you are familiar with this system okay use the cgi portal okay to request for a change in the school just write to them uh, using the feedback session that you have secured admission to a different school and then you would like to change your current school on file that will be done and then you will have your new school to go to your visa interview with you understand so that is that one. And then somebody also wants to know number of rescheduling visa appointments on the portal. And I'm like, yeah, 
in recent time the appointment uh, rescheduling has been well, restricted to only two times right only two times that means that you cannot reschedule like first you can do it like maximum four times now your first booking and your second reschedule okay that means that once you do this first two you are uh, going to work uh, pay for another one before uh, you can work uh, do another rescheduling so be mindful that once you log on to the system and then you book your first appointment it should be what you want if it is not what you want you can book the first one and be looking forward for the the favorite date that you want right you can book the first one and be looking forward for the favorite date that you want once you reach there for the favorite date that you want that ends it you can't get another date again unless you pay for what well, another what mrv fee this is the experience we have had with what well, the um, cgi portal when it comes to the visa appointment that is ghana i don't know how it is in other countries but that is ghana okay so this uh, experience is limited to ghana um, cgi portal i don't know what is happening in other countries so maybe if you are aware of what's happening in other countries you can also share in the comment section so that people who are trying to apply in other countries will also learn that okay other countries too this is how it's happening okay so that is what that question to what has also been what addressed then somebody also asked can i pay service fee okay i mean can i pay service fee before like you know admission or something i mean i've also addressed that question that service fee should be the last thing you think of in paying but once you secure admission i think the first thing you need to do is to pay for your visa fee once you secure admission you secure your i20 okay you pay for your visa fee look for dates okay book your um dates before you do what you go ahead and then pay your what service fee okay so that is also what settled okay dates looking for dates is sometimes difficult that is why they also create a system where you have to uh, pay for your visa fee okay look for dates and then before your service fee. service fee is supposed to be paid 48 hours to your interview okay but I always advise students that pay it um, at least a week to your interview. It gives you the chance for flexibility. It gives you the chance to also um, you know, accept any challenge that may come. Okay, If you wait till 48 hours before you are paying, you may end up not having it reflected in your system or on your portal, and then you have to uh, reschedule again. And once you reschedule, you know that was, you lose that interview slot, and you have to now come and work hands for this so please take note from this that what you don't you know you don't need to work, pay service fee before you book for f1 visa interview okay but you have to pay 48 hours to the interview so have maximum one week to pay before you go for your f1 work, visa work, interview right so these are some of the questions that uh, came through and then i've addressed them so um if there are more questions if there is something more somebody wants to know if you know this whole process i also mentioned that in this whole process the practical amount of money you are going to pay is your service fee and then your visa fee okay that is after a secured admission okay i've seen videos where people say that you have to pay for ds160 something no please you don't pay for ds160 so anywhere you see such things or anyone who is telling you that you have to pay for ds-160 form please i'm saying that you don't pay for anything called ds-160 form there are only two things involved after you secured admission there are only two things involved in this process that is when it comes to us f1 visa interview there are only two things involved after a secure admission you pay for your visa fee which is your mrv fee and then you pay for your service fee which is what like around 350 dollars okay practically these are the things you need to uh, pay for and i also mentioned that the 350 dollars is what the system takes but those who are helping you to pay are likely to charge you maybe 370 380 or 390 because sometimes it's the transactional charges and what have you do you understand so please be mindful of some of these things okay so that even if an agent is assisting you you also want to be involved in what the agent is doing you don't sit down somebody to come and tell you that you have to pay for ds160 mm -mm. you don't pay for it it's just a form you fill and that is the form that is used to question you at the interview where you include your work experience you know the school you are going 
who is finding you and then what have you but you don't pay for it it's just a form you feel okay so please don't be deceived nobody pay for ds160 two things it's only two things that you you pay for your visa fee and then your service fee okay so take note of this anyone who is assisting you you also want to be involved to know what what is is also happening on your portal there are those who also talks about um can i request for emergency because i'm going for fall and what have you i'm i'm going for fall or spring i'm like okay yeah you can request for emergency but the recent learning or happening we've seen is that emergencies are being rejected so if you apply for emergency be mindful that once it is rejected you are likely going to you know lose the current slots that you have and then you may have to pay for another mrv okay so that is also the the question on the emergency okay the question on the emergency is that can i also request for emergency because i'm going for spring 2024 which starts in january my course starts in january 8 but i'm still not getting a date two things you may request for emergency and get rejected and then you have to be prepared to pay for another mrv or you may what defer okay you may defer to four talk to your school tell them it's difficult getting a visa slot in ghana and in the neighboring country so you may defer so they should defer your application for four for you defer your application for four means that um you would have opportunity to work get a date of your own and then do what go ahead to do your interview do you understand so these are some of the things that you would want to learn on this journey as well there are more but then as we progress as the questions keeps coming i'm going to uh, clarify them bit by bit so i'm not going to take much of your time today because i know that you see that you are on your way home you see that you are home and then you are prepared to you know take shower and rest or you see that you are shutting your machine down at the office or wherever you are you know you are in your trusty going home you're in your driving going home or whatever preparing to close please this is just some of the questions that people have asked and then i find it welcoming and then i want to what clarify it for you so thank you all for joining and i will appreciate if you leave your comments and if you share this video with anyone and then for people who have similar concerns similar challenges they can also watch this video and be clear of the journey of doing it yourself and what they need to watch out for and what they don't need to do and all that right so that no one will end up creating a scar before they look for help right so i will see you another time thank you for your time and i appreciate you all keep the questions coming keep sharing the links and then at the end of the day we will enlighten everyone remember almost everyone have the opportunity to travel and it is possible we will meet see you another time bye bye